Okay, so you may have seen some of these infinite zoom tutorials out there, maybe for mid journey. Well, I'm going to show you how to do it using just Photoshop. And I attended this amazing dog expo in Portland where there was a dog artwork competition full of all these incredible drawings. So I'm just going to pick one and that's going to be our start of our infinite zoom. I'm just going to crop down on it here, get it centered. Then I'm going to double click our background layer just so it's a regular layer. That way we can get a transparent background behind us. And then I'm just going to check the image size here in pixels. And it's pretty big. I know that Photoshop will bog down on us when this thing gets too big. So let's just do like 1200 by 900. So when I use the crop tool, which is C on your keyboard or this tool over here on the toolbar, and if I drag out, I'm actually option shift dragging on a Mac to keep those proportions, but you don't have to. When I drag out, it's going to give me this empty space to work with. And in this text box here, I can type in what I want to see in that extra area. So it's going to maintain the image here, but it's going to generate stuff around it. And if you leave this field blank, it's actually just going to try and continue the style of the artwork it has. So you can see it did a pretty good job of just extending the canvas in the original style of the artwork. So now that I've got that, I'm going to drag out a little bit further. And this time, I want to see a field of watercolor flowers and watercolor clouds in the sky. And over here in the properties panel, you can see some different variations. Uh, I'll go with this one. And I'm going to zoom out again. And this time, I'm going to say crowd of lumpy dogs staring off into the horizon and a rainbow in the sky. All right, big old rainbow. I think our first one's the best. If we didn't like any of these, we could hit generate again and just keep going and, and get this thing looking beautiful. But it's pretty dang amazing right now. So I'm gonna crop again and this time, just going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to say a gilded picture frame surrounding the watercolor painting. I don't know if I'd quite call any of these gilded. They look a little wooden to me, a little faux gold, but we'll take that. Okay, so this is our zoom material. If I were to flatten all these layers and then resize my canvas back to what we started with, 1200 by 900. You can see our image is still here. If I drag it up, you can see I've got the rest of the stuff that we created with the generative fill. But now we're essentially back at our own starting point, but with the rest of this image. So what we want to do is create a video timeline. The three properties it gives us are position, opacity, and style. What I really want is the transform property because I want to transform the scale. The only way I've found to do this in Photoshop by saying zoom, and it gives us these two keyframes. And now you can see rather than position, we've got transform. That's the only way I've figured out to get transform. And so really what I wanted to do is zoom in until we're at our full artwork size here. Here we've got our, our zoom. So obviously I only did a few generations here and you could just keep going, but this also doesn't give us an infinite zoom effect. And if I wanted to do that, we're going to need to get to a place where our generated fill has some element of the starting image. So let's work on that. So what I want to do is back up a few steps here. I've gotten rid of that video timeline, but I'm going to actually hit command A. I'm just going to select the whole visible area. I'm going to copy. And so now we've got a new layer and this new layer is just our starting image. I'll hide that. Still got this other one with our frame. So I'm going to scale that way down. Let's say uh, 10%. And behind it is going to be this big old dog. And my goal will actually be to get it so that the dog is not visible at all, just maybe the grass or the sky. So let's scale that up, say 500%. If we were to drag this down, you can see we've dragged it down 1700 pixels there. Let's, let's actually go down to 1800. That's good. So now we got pure blue sky with this little picture frame in the middle here. So now if we create this video timeline, we're going to merge our layers. We want to get that transform again. 
But what we want to do is we we did it uh, 500% bigger. So the inverse of that is, uh, is at 20%. So we want to scale this down from this starting size, 20%, and just drag it up into the center here. And now that's going to give us, basically, that thing is so small, I don't think we'll really notice. That's going to give us our infinite effect. So really, let's say if we wanted to make this, I don't know, twice as long, then let's actually move these keyframes to the end here. So if we get this image centered here and then our scale at one fifth scale, which is 20%, now we're back to start. So now we just need to get that last frame to the start frame. So I'm gonna just paste in our original doggo here so we have a reference. I'll change the opacity. And then I'm just gonna move this layer to where it matches up there. That looks pretty good. So now let's just click render video and see what we end up with. Okay, here's our video of our amazing looking dog scene. And it looks like we got some pixelation here. Also the keyframes are kind of disproportionate to the amount we're zooming so we could be a little bit more methodical about that but you get the gist of how you create these infinite zooms if your expertise is in photoshop or photoshop is all you have access to this is one way to create these zooms if you create any infinite zooms with your awesome children's artwork let me know